Hey everyone, it's Nino. So today I want to give you a little bit of a demonstration. All right, so what I'm going to do is I have this action set up and it's a utility action that I use a lot when I'm creating actions and when I'm trying to figure out new ways to control images. And I'm, at the moment it's called image full decomposition because what I'm doing is I'm decomposing the image into its constituent parts. And doing that just requires well, a lot of processes and a little bit of understanding of how, you know, blend mode, calculations, some mathematics, etc. I'm going to walk you through it strictly for demonstration purposes, but to give you an idea of how we at MVP approach image manipulation in some manner. Yeah, there are times when being straightforward is what you need. You just get in, add some color, clean up the skin a little bit, and your image is beautiful and your work is great. Other times we need to decompose our image in various ways. This demonstration is kind of like, I don't know, everything mixed in together. It's not the most practical layer stack, but it's kind of fun to look at. And it really illustrates what's possible when it comes to seeing your image differently, breaking it down, and being able to control each part in unique ways. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. This is an image by my buddy Sanjeev, beautiful shot. We're going to go ahead and run that real quick. I always love, you know, landscapes or whatever done with long focal lengths. You don't see it as often. That's really killer. All right. So it takes a minute to do all of this process. And then we're going to walk you through it. OK, so let's take a look what happened. We have a huge layer stack over here. OK, similar to our image analysis action set, which is a little more practical, a little more useful. This shows you what's possible. The first thing I want to do is down here on this background layer, which is where our original image from Sanjeev came up. I'm going to turn it off. OK. Now, if you look carefully at every single layer as we go down, every single raster layer, OK, if you see, not one of them contains the original image. That background image, the composite, is turned off right now. So we are still getting the original image. Let's turn on the composite real quick. We're going to show just the composite. And now the layer stack. Composite, layer stack, identical. So I'm going to turn off the background still. Now I'm going to turn off that composite version of the image. We have separated it in all kinds of ways. Let's explore what we've done. So what we have down here, first of all, we have the shadows and midtones and highlights separated, but not separated in an arbitrary way. We didn't create a you know luminosity mass that we think looked cool. It's literally very mathematical, very linear, up to 50% point, etc. Everything is so it can blend back together. So what you're looking at when you look at these three, if we were to turn off, let's turn off a few things here. Let's turn off our frequency chroma and hue, and we'll turn off our hue angle separation layer. Okay, so now we just see shadows folder, midtones folder, and highlights folder separated. This right here, this is our brightness data. Okay, that's what we're looking at here. But we split the brightness evenly across shadows, mids, and highs, and we put it back together. So we kind of took it apart and put it back together using various blending modes and methods, right? But on top of that, we also added the hue angle separation, um, you know, the main six colors everyone's used to. We have the red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta, which are the six color, the hue angles that make up um, an image, right, in Photoshop. So in digital imaging in general. So each one of those has been separated out. We extracted each one uh, exactly right. So for example, this is the uh, blues. You can see how that looks. And these are the reds. OK, now because of the nature of the layer stacks, we're seeing a positive. OK, which is more of a like a like a printing separation look. OK, but the mask is the black area. OK, so that's showing the red. All right, you can see how the reds were in there. And if we look at the cyans, of course, we'll see some of the sky in the background and whatnot. So all that's layered on top of that, again, with various blending modes and some calculations to mix it nicely on top of its brightness. Now, what's interesting is that that's the nature of how we had to separate it if we want to make this layer stack work. But see, this is just one way to do it. This is just one way to decompose an image. You know, most people don't even realize that you can take all this chroma data. That's what this is, by the way. If we look at it by itself, this is a chroma layer. OK, in this case, a white chroma layer and without the, the brightness data underneath it. So what we have here is pure chroma. You can get this exact layer that looks exactly like this by extracting white chroma. But we've taken that further and taken the white chroma and separated it into the six core hue angles. OK, on top of that, if we turn on this layer, this folder on top. We have frequency, chroma, hue as well, also separated in their own way. Again, more of a demonstration. For example, this is the low frequency layer, which if you look at it by itself, is a blurred version of the image using median, right? And then we have the high layer, which 
was extracted from that low. It's a copy of it, extracted from the low to create a high. In this case, we had a median radius of 16. Why does it still work with all the color underneath it? Because that low layer is set to luminosity blending mode. Because to create this frequency separation, we extracted luminosity data. Not brightness. Brightness wasn't necessary for the hue angle split. But here, we use luminosity data on top, change it to luminosity blending mode, and the seamless stack continues. Of course, on top of that, we have the high frequency, which most of you are used to on linear light, seamless again. We have the chroma white, which I told you mm, looks familiar, right? This is all composited into chroma, set to color blending mode. Then I have a hue map on top of that, which is literally pure hue, maxed out brightness, maxed out saturation. And of course, we set it to hue, and it's also blended. You see how so this kind of understanding, you might think, what am I going to ever use this for? You may not, but understanding that that's how image calculating, if you will, both adjustment layers and raster layers and whatnot. If you understand how to break down your image into decomposing it where, where certain functions will be easier for you, you can become a very, very dangerous retoucher and graphic designer in general. Okay. That's what this demo is for to kind of show you what's possible. Let's try a portrait. So let's run image full decomposition. Now the way this little action is set up, um, it tries to assume that you have a color image and if you don't, it still will succeed, which is great, but it's not as useful if you don't have a color image. Okay, so once again, the stack is done. All right, so we can see we have, you know, there's our midtones that's been extracted again, not arbitrarily, but mathematically. Okay, and then we have our red. Again, we're looking at a positive. This is the reds and this is the yellows, etc. And then of course we have everything from the low frequency to the chroma white on top to the hue map on top as well. So. Again, showing what's possible because you can theoretically come in here to the red solid color that we have on our separation and we can choose a new hue for the red. Oops, see, why, why didn't we see it? Because we still have the hue and chroma on top, which is overwriting it all. So we're going to turn that the whole folder off, come back to red, and then we can see we can shift the red any way we want, but not just hue. We can shift the hue and then we can change the saturation of it if we want and we can change the brightness of it if we want. We can change that red to anything that we want. On the midtone, similar to Actions 14, we can dial in any color into the midtones as a full HSB replacement. Anything we want, dial that in if we want. Shadows, of course, can change that any way we want. Again, HSB replacement, so everything gets really bright if you wanted it to be, etc. Okay, we can change anything. On top of that, with this layer setup, since you're looking at the black. The black area, again, the positive shows the red. This is the red mask, okay? You can take this mask and modify it. You could come here and take a levels, and let's say you clip it down into that mask. And now with levels, we can modify the saturation of the reds. We can pull this side in and we increase the saturation of the reds. We can pull this side down and we decrease the saturation of red while increasing contrast. That's what we do with the input levels. The output levels are reverse. If we pull it in, we're decreasing uh, saturation and then we're increasing saturation linearly. So if we were to do something like a 30 here, I don't know, and a 225 here, this is saturation compression on the reds. You can't compress the red saturation on its own in another way. If you we needed to or wanted that kind of control, this sort of layer stack, maybe not with everything, but this sort of layer stack is what would you would need. So just understanding, I want to accomplish this, how do I go about accomplishing it, right? And that's why knowing how to break things down, how to decompose an image into various, you know, constituent parts like this is important. For example, this high frequency here, if I were to heal on it, okay, we may or may not see some interesting results if we try to heal on this. So let's get rid of this little, let's see if we can actually do any healing on here. Turn that on. Let's see. Let's go ahead and go to that hair. Okay. So yeah, it is working. We haven't tested this. I just did it for demo. Yeah, so I'm healing up here for some reason if I really wanted to. And everything else underneath is still independent of that. In theory, I could add, I could add dodge and burn levels, layers to this, like in curves or something like that, and be able to dodge and burn on top of everything but underneath the chroma, which is also underneath the hue, which is completely unnecessary. But we can just keep going if we understand what's possible. Layer stacks like this intimidate people and they panic and they don't know what to think or what to do. But when you look at a layer stack as possibilities, whether you understand all the math and the calculations and whatnot, 
um, it's not important. If you see a layer stack from an action set of ours, like NBP tools, 15, et cetera, um, don't get intimidated by it. Realize this is, we're giving you power. We're giving you control. This layer stack may be control for you, but it's just more of a demo, like I said, but it still shows you what's possible. And as you can see, as I turn these things off, this whole first four top layers here don't seem to do anything because they're built up in such a way. Remember, as a reminder, this is the luminosity blurred for the low layer set to luminosity blending mode. The high texture layer has been extracted using apply image. It's set to linear light. The chroma data is set to color and the hue data is set to hue and everything is seamless. This sort of understanding, again, can be very, very useful. We at MVP want to help you. We want to help you learn this stuff. If that's what you're interested in, we'd love your feedback. Yeah, we get a ton of, of requests that people say, can you make more skin editing actions? Can we get more color grading actions? Can we see CMX2 um, updated to do XYZ, whatever requests we get? We get all kinds of tools and, and, and requests and everything else. But trying to teach you about color science and things like image decomposition and other ways to manipulate images we are listening as well. Yeah, those are the minority customers. There's not a whole lot of you wanting this sort of thing. But if you do, we are happy to provide it. We do a lot of analysis like this, a lot of image decomposition like this when we're creating our actions to see what's possible, to see if there's a, a method of doing a traditional function, maybe slightly differently. You know, the way Magic Automatic works, for example, uh, blurs the skin without destroying texture in a way that I've not seen before. And we ran across it. We thought this is really cool. And I think it got a decent result. We're always exploring and I encourage you to do the same. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you have any questions about this sort of thing, if you're into color science and even maybe much more advanced than this sort of thing, let me know. Uh, if you want to talk about it, if you want to, you know, in discuss, let me know. Send me an email, nbp at ninabatista.com. And of course, like I said, we're always listening, whether you want, uh, simple artistic creative tools, um, which are still awesome, don't get me wrong. Or if you want to dive into the technical um, and do image decomposition and everything else, we're always here, we're always listening. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that today. Check it out, mbpretouchtools.com. Going into the future here right now, it's currently April, 2023. And as we move forward going into the summer of 2023, we're gonna have some new tool sets that are gonna reflect a little bit of this technical stuff still, but also some really cool creative tools that I think you guys will like and some updates. So thanks again, guys. 